in example 1c, the graph is a circle. So the x-intercepts are right here and right here. Okay, that's where the circle intersects the x-axis. Okay, so we need to write these two points down as ordered pairs. Okay, so this point right here uh, has coordinates. The x value is negative 2 on the x-axis. And then since this point is on the x-axis, that means the y-coordinate is 0. And then this particular point, the other x-intercept, its x-coordinate is positive 2. And again, since this point is on the x-axis, the y-value is 0. Okay, so we have two x-intercepts, negative 2, 0, and positive 2, 0. Okay, as far as the y-intercepts, the circle is going to intersect the y-axis in two places, right here and right here. Okay, again, you see the values negative 2 and positive 2. But again, to distinguish these points from the x-intercepts, it's all based on the ordered pair x, y. Okay, this point right here, its x-coordinate is 0 because this point is on the y-axis. Its y-coordinate is negative 2. This point again has an x-coordinate of 0 because the point is on the y-axis and the y-coordinate is positive 2. Okay, so those are your two y-intercepts. So we have 0, negative 2, and 0, positive 2. All right, moving on to the last graph in example 1D. Okay, so here's the picture. Um, this graph kind of has two parts to it. So I'm just going to scribble on the graph uh, and then we'll talk about the intercepts. So the graph, if you look closely at it, it starts right here at this point and then it's a straight line until you get to this point and then it jets off into this line going in this direction. Okay, so that's what the graph looks like here. So um, when you're looking at the x-intercepts here, it's a little tricky because if you notice, a good portion of this graph actually lies on top of the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight that part for you. So from right here, from where the graph starts to this point right here, all of those points are on the x-axis. So there are a ton of x-intercepts. Okay, so why are there a ton? Okay, you may look at this and say, hey, all right, it's going to start here. So negative 5 is an x-intercept, and then negative 4, and then negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, and that's true. All of these x values are x-intercepts. However, okay, you can't forget that every little number in between is also an x-intercept. So for example, if I'm right here, okay, halfway between x equals 0 and x equals 1, 0.5 or 1 half, that is also an x-intercept, okay? So is the number right here, halfway between negative 3 and negative 2, that's negative 2.5, also an x-intercept, okay? So basically, let's look at this again, okay? And we've got to figure out how to write this down, okay? So basically, this line, this horizontal line, is starting at x equals negative 5, okay? And then every single number, including the decimals, the fractions, every single number between negative 5 and positive 2 is an x-intercept, okay? Any number that falls in, in between negative 5 and negative 2, okay? So what we're going to do is you cannot possibly write down every single number between negative 5 and positive 2, okay? Because you have to catch all the decimals, okay? Um, something like 0 0.00000001 is going to be an x-intercept, okay? So since we can't list everything out, we're going to use something called interval notation, okay? So the way it works is, and you're going to see a lot of interval notation in this class, Okay, interval notation is always written from left to right. So for this little segment that I have in red that represents all the x-intercepts here, you're going to go from left to right. Okay, the first x-intercept that we encounter is negative 5. Okay, and then we're going to put a comma and then imagine like you're just walking along this line. Okay, if you start at negative 5, you're going to walk until you get to positive 2. So we're going to put negative 5, comma, 2. 
okay and then with interval notation you have to put some kind of ending uh, notation on these numbers so there's parentheses and brackets okay so the first thing I wrote down here these are brackets the square brackets that means to include the points okay this usually the brackets corresponds to closed circles okay so if you see a closed circle that means to include the point if you see an open circle that means to exclude the point and you would use parentheses okay so that would mean exclude like I said you're gonna see a lot of interval notation in this class so start putting it into your brain okay again a closed circle means you want to include the point and you would use square brackets an open circle means you're gonna use parentheses and exclude that particular point okay and that's for the endpoints so if we go back and look at this in particular if you look at negative 5 that blue dot on negative 5 is closed so negative 5 is included so we're going to put a bracket here okay to include negative 5 it, if it had been an open circle then negative 5 would not be included as an x-intercept and you would put a parentheses okay when you look at positive 2 it also has a closed circle so we're going to include it so we're going to put a bracket okay so basically that's how we're going to write this down okay I'm going to kind of move things around here okay um this is different than an ordered pair okay you kind of have to rely on the context am I talking about an ordered pair or am I talking about an interval okay so since there were too many x-intercepts to list them out we have to use this compact notation of interval notation so I'm going to write here all x values in the interval from negative 5 to 2 including those endpoints okay so that's the way I'm going to indicate that all of these numbers are x intercepts okay we cannot possibly list them all out as ordered pairs so this will have to do okay all right so now let's jump to the y intercept here again you want to look at this blue graph and see you know is there a place or more than one place where your graph is intersecting the y-axis and that's only happening at one place right here okay this green dot okay that is the point zero zero okay um, that is a, zero zero has a special name okay uh, it's called the origin so the origin here is the only y-intercept okay so I'm put zero zero you can write that as an ordered pair this is not when you look at this y-intercept that's written zero zero with the parentheses that's not an interval okay it is just a single point we're looking at here okay again when you encounter interval interval notation in this class you can see it with parentheses okay um, it just really depends on the context as to whether you're dealing with an ordered pair or if you're dealing with an interval okay all right so our only y-intercept here is the origin zero zero I'm gonna put out to the side this is called the origin okay and that is it for example 1d this was definitely a tricky one uh, especially for the x-intercepts here okay um, make sure like I said that you remember this you might want to put a, a little star in your notes or whatever you want to remember this in information for interval notation